yes so now it is live streamed so we are live on facebook youtube okay okay nehar will start hello hello uh, can you hear me hello ha nehar ji near yes so for a moment i was just uh, setting up basic few things yes yes okay you can start after finishing okay yes we can start now namaste uh, i am nihar barve and i welcome you all to continuation of this series we have explored two topics so far which focus on sustainable consumption and waste to energy you can watch both of those webinars on our youtube channel in this series of webinars we will be exploring the sub theme of waste and life under the civil 20 working group the aim of these seminars is to provide viewers with a comprehensive understanding of the concepts future courses of action and the innovation taking place in the sub theme we are excited to promote and spread awareness about the importance of sustainable lifestyle that can help us achieve a better future and for ourselves and our planet during this webinar we encourage you to ask questions and share your comments as long as they are linked to the topic at hand we appreciate your presence and hope you enjoy this informative and engaging session the topic today is e waste challenges and opportunities our speaker today dr amanika tripathi is a highly accomplished professor and the head of pollution ecology research laboratory at the department of botany in hindu college moradabad He is also an alumni of Banaras Hindu University, associated with them from 1990 to 1999. With a focus on ecology and environmental pollution, Dr. Tripathi has published 44 full-length papers in reputed national and international journals. She has also received numerous awards and honors for her work, including being a guest speaker at Digital Week and Indian Perspective in Accra, Ghana. and as a resource person in the second world congress on toxicology and applied pharmacology in berlin germany she is a member of various scientific communities and has undertaken various training programs in air quality monitoring gis application in forestry and ecology among others her contributions to the field of environmental science has been recognized nationally and internationally making her an expert in the field i welcome anandika ji Thank you so much, Nehar ji, for such kind words. I extend my thanks to Purnam Eco Vision for a noble initiative, Lifestyle for Environment, to improve our lifestyle for a better biome. Congratulations to your entire team. I welcome all the audience here. So we are going to talk about a valuable waste that's increasing day by day, and when we compare. this waste with other types of waste generally we just talk think of reduction that we can be a good consumer buy less consume less but here the case is different a must buy product a person can't leave his home without a phone in a pocket and some money and even in the crisis time like earthquake if one rushes outside from home firstly one will try to grab his phone and so just think of how important and how it has entered in our daily life about 50% of this waste is personal devices and rest is larger household appliances it has two parts metals and plastic and metals can be recovered and plastics can also be recycled that is just simple so we must be aware of this according to studies there is 100 times more gold in a ton of smartphone than in a ton of gold ore so think of it again our richest deposits of the costly metal lie in our homes and offices and sitting in the landfill sites more needs to be made of these resources 
so that how you support to your sustainable earth. And there is a shlok of Atharve, Mata Bhumihi Utroham Prithivya. We are the sons and daughters of our mother earth. As we have only one planet and there is no planet B. And when we are ready to come out our comfortable lifestyle, anything is possible. World is looking towards us. Now, I wish to like uh, sharing my slides. Yes, your slide is, is visible now. Yeah, this is visible. And mainly it is round about the what are our challenges and what the opportunities lies. Next. Uh, Ma'am, you would have to click. Where? Where? Neharji? Uh, uh, can you uh, tap the key on the keyboard, the down or the side one? Uh, no, it's not moving. Okay. Yeah. Can you give me the access? Or? Yeah, yeah. But I have approved. But not moving still. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's moving. Right. Yeah. Thanks. E waste is basically considered as any electrical or electronic equipment that is called as triple E that no longer fulfills the purpose for which they were manufactured. So increase in the number of AAA industries has resulted in the corresponding change in consumer lifestyles, thereby more generation of end-of-life electronics, and this is known as electronic waste. Its composition is very diverse and differs among different categories and contains more than 1,000 different substances, which falls under the hazardous and non-hazardous categories. It doesn't consist only toxic heavy metals such as lead, cadmium, mercury, chromium, but also valuable metals such as gold, copper, platinum, and silver. E waste is mainly categorized in electrical, electric waste, and electronic waste. So, electric waste is not more dangerous, but electronic waste is more harmful than the electric waste. The first meeting was held in Basel that is located in Switzerland. Originally, the Basel Convention 1992 didn't mention the e-waste, but later it addressed the issues of e-waste in 2006 that was included in COP8. And that time an incident happened that I will tell you after some time. In Switzerland 1998, an ordinance was passed, ORDIA, the return, taking back and disposal of electrical and electronic appliances. And here, two types of recycling systems are active. SWIPO, that is based on the information, communication, and organization technology that covers the brown electronics. And since that Stiffung Endorsgang Swiss system that covers the white electronics. And the Nairobi Declaration was adopted at COP19 of the Basel Convention on the control of transboundary movement of hazardous waste. It aimed at creating innovative solution for the environmentally sound management of electronic waste. Global e-waste increased in post-COVID-19 driven by demands for electronics due to remote working and homeschooling, as you saw. African countries, notably Ghana, Nigeria on the western coast and Tanzania that is located on eastern coast, is known as an open dump site from more than two decades. And recently, 
Lions Club International uh, in our country started a nationwide e waste collection campaign named as Dump and Donate. And this campaign is started from 13 January 23 in across 120 cities of the country with Hindustan e waste management private limited and national independent schools alliance that is NISA and their aim is mainly to reach out to schools institutions and other mediums to create awareness and to promote that awareness now eves day is also being celebrated on 14th october and the first electronic waste day was celebrated in 2018. this is the chart and you can see this is the flow alpha from 2019 to 2030 the data is uh, given here that is increasing day by day and in the next slides you can see how data is increased the global e waste flows you can see there are different types of electronic components that are small components are 38 percent lamps and equipments are 20 percent and these are 70 and 15 and 9 percent the most harmful is the screen that is 15 percent and out of the 80 percent is not even collected or recycled properly and even not documented and these are dumped plated or recycled under the inferior conditions and 20 percent waste is only documented and properly collected and recycled by different companies and here four percent is going in our household waste so this is the mapping out of e-waste from where it goes and from where it is imported. In next slide, it is very clear that United Nations, United States and European Union, there are two developed countries and mainly uh, these uh, export the electronic waste from, uh, from their countries to the developing countries, mainly to the India, China, Nigeria, Brazil, Africa. So these are the countries where these are exported. And about half of the e waste is created by uh, United States and European Union of the total e waste. These so this is again a data how we generate e waste every year. 18, you can see about 50 million tons of e waste was created. And in 2020, about 25 to 50 million. And in 21, this was increased 52 million. And you can see what was the condition in 2040, what will be the condition that 14% of all the emissions will be from electronic waste. And you can think of 2050 that 120 million tons will be created. And in 2060, almost all the e waste will be doubled on our planet. So these are mainly six categories. And this is published in World Economic Forum in the latest by 2020. So these are uh, different categories in when, uh, mainly six categories. And 6.6 .6 million ton is you can see that is the screen and in screen and small ITs and 0.7 is lamps that are fluorescent lamps, the SARS lamps in large equipments are our household that are the dishwashing machine and frizz and everything and small equipments and in temperature exchange equipment that AC and frizz. So these are total six categories and these are the, uh, earlier it was categorized into 10 categories. The, what are the presence of toxic pollutants in part of, parts of the electronics? The pollutants, you can see that these are lead, mercury, arsenic, cadmium, copper, zinc, nickel, and chromium. Almost all are in carcinogenic categories. And where it is present, you can see mercury in LCD and switches. And what mercury causes that when it comes in contact with the soil and uh, in water bodies, 
it converted into methylated mercury and that is very poisonous and that is carcinogenic also so these are hazardous categories of waste and how it is polluting toxic metals released in e-waste pollution that you can see that is the six is very dangerous category that is uh, chromium hexavalent chromium mainly cadmium lead mercury and arsenic this is the indian perspective that was presented in ghana because this time the world hot hotspot is the ghana african countries mainly accra and what was being done that is uh, it is very inferior conditions but they are doing better they are improving better these are some metals that are chromium mercury zinc lead cadmium arsenic nickel and copper what they causes they causes a lot of problems that's why we are sitting here to discuss everything like mercury it damages to the brain and kidneys and due to mercury exposure because you know the biomagnification process of mercury and cadmium that is very harmful that damage to lungs and leads to vomiting and arsenic causes to the even death and copper due to anemia liver and kidney damage stomach and intestine infection so you can see later now you can see that when these waste are being dumped in open the soil is also polluted the crops are also polluted air is polluted uh, any component is not left there so you can see that when the these metals are this is the soil crop pathway and when it is goes in the uh, soil it was absorbed by the uh, these roots and these roots uh, take uh, the water and uh, these metals were taken up by the plants and these plants you can see the when we eat then our vital organs are affected and the, then uh, we are suffering from many problems and when it is affected uh, the water bodies and the soil you can see our lungs are affected and water bodies and you can see the drinking water and ground water this is also polluted this is the particulate matter that is emitted in the air emission so these are 10 categories that is pm 100 pm 10 pm 2.5 and pm 1 so pm 100 you can see on the table and uh, anywhere that you can wipe out so these are the coarser particles that's why they falls under the gravity and we can even clean on the surfaces but pm 10 and pm 2.5 they remain suspended all the time in the air and we are bound to inhale it. There is no option for us. And uh, PM10 only reaches up to the lungs, but PM2.5 reaches in the blood exchange. So our blood is getting polluted. And PM1 is the ultrafine particles that is most dangerous, but they are monitored only in the metro cities. This is PM10, you can see on the site where it is exposed for eight hours this is the unexposed paper that is white and black one is after eight hours exposure. So in eight hours, you can see what is the value and what is the difference means these black particles, these soot particles that uh, goes in our lungs and we are affected. So these, uh, this was actually published in the Gulf Times in 2017, when the air quality index was 416. Uh, you can uh, uh, imagine of that air. This is the PM 2.5. These are the filter papers of PM 2.5. And these are exposed of uh, 12 hours. This, this news is uh, published uh, recently on 7th April in Nature because um, uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is about the 
air pollution, how it affects our lungs, and it causes cancer also. These are the different air quality index and based upon how the color we can see that in the green zone, this is the air quality index is very good and light green means slightly better and moderately polluted, you can see. So mostly our cities falls in the yellow categories or orange categories. And sometimes in the winter season, uh, our city comes in the maroon zone also. That is uh, the very severe conditions. Nothing is visible in the in moment. So what are the global challenges made? So global waste production have doubled in the last decades and EPA estimates that only 15 to 20 percent of the e-waste is recycled and rest of the e-waste goes directly to the landfill. And mainly the process is open dumping, manual dismantling, incineration and landfilling. So although the local citizens benefit from the precious metal recovery, from the environment and health of their offspring suffers from the substantial release of toxic components. These contaminants when enter in the food chain and finally accumulate in the human bodies by ingestion or inhalation routes. And unfortunately, it has been documented that these pollutants have been found and damages the DNA and chromosome of the infants and children as well. Since the citizens and workers lack awareness, thus do not know the serious risk of concerning their safety and health. These are the main key points that is less involvement of people. Why people are not aware? Why they are not dumping and they are not giving their e-waste, which is lying in their home. So a key factor in used electronic devices not being given by the for recycling purpose. So they have to do, and how about in recent years, countries around the world have been attempting to pass effective right to repair laws. And here you can see the second point, involvement of child labor, that is most important point here, about 4.5 lakh child laborers in the age group of 10 to 14 are observed to be engaged in various e-waste activities and that too without adequate protection and safeguards in various yards and recycling workshops. And legislations are also ineffective. There is absence of any public information on most state pollution control boards and pollution control committees websites. And health hazards. E-waste contains over 1000 toxic materials which contaminate soil and groundwater people. Lack of incentive schemes. No clear guidelines are there for the unorganized sector to handle e-waste. Also, no incentives are mentioned to lure people engaged to adopt a formal pathway for handling e-waste. And the formal path is the only formal sector. E-waste imports, cross-border flow of waste, equipment into India, 80% of e-waste in developed countries meant for recycling is sent to developing countries such as China, India, Ghana, Nigeria. The reluctance of authorities involved. The lack of coordination between various authorities responsible for this management and disposal include the non-involvement of municipalities also. So security implications is also there that end of life computers often contain some sensitive personal information and bank account details also. So if not deleted, leave opportunities for fraud. Meet the Manufacturers Association for Information Technology. This is creating the linkage between informal and formal recyclers and to set up collection centers to channelize the EVs for further processing. And Ministry of Environment and Forest and Climate Change notified the proper e-waste management rules in 2011, and that came into force from 1st May 2012. And Central Pollution Control Board, about 74 to 75 authorized e-waste recyclers are registered only. 
that is mainly a Atro Recycler Association that is located in Rudki and Eparisara in South. Namu E Waste Management Limited is working in Gurgaon. Eco Rico E Waste Recycling, Earth Sense Recycling, Toxic Links, and Sahas Zero Waste. Chintan Group, they are working in Delhi also and they are collecting door to door e waste from there and they collect at one side. And finally, they are processing for the channelizing uh, to the formal sector. And e waste clinic at Bhopal is a pilot project where e waste will be collected door to door or could be deposited directly at the clinic in exchange for a fee. And this is the uh, main lure that when people got a fee or some incentives, they proceed towards. And many two types of adopted recycling methods, and these are informal and formal methods. So informal recycling and formal recycling, and besides this, uh, some illegal recycling also being done. Where is, there is no regulation, there is nothing. Nothing is working there. So some parties also, some uh, uh, areas and regions are generally doing illegal recycling. But informal recycling, where a storage point is also there, and almost manual dismantling is done, means larger part is broken into smaller parts, and then crushing and after crushing, crushing and washing, open burning is being done that is emitting toxic pollutants and people are exposed to them directly. And acid bath, you know, acid bath is being done sometimes in a closed room where concentrated nitric acid is poured in a large drum and everything is melted there, even metals and plastic parts. So what is the conditions of that room you can imagine? So after that, they recovery the costly metals and landfilling of the remaining toxic substances, finally they were dumped. Informal recycling that is being done only 5% in the country that involve the three stages. In the first stage, decontamination is being done that the toxic parts are uh, separated and then dismantling is broken down parts and then segregated. All parts were segregated that what is this, what is this, where it goes. And in the second stage, hammering is being done, the part which is not easy to break, that is hammered. And the shredding machine is known for the, because here some magnetic uh, chips are uh, uh, located there. So the iron portion is sticked on that surface and the plastic portion is thrown outside. And from the bad process, it is also being done that is best available technology. And in the third stage, recycling is done and recycling is being done by the chemical, mechanical and thermal processes. And finally, all the costly metals are recovered and the metals that were hazardous that will be released in a safe manner. Now these are the rules and legislations. The first legislation on EVs was known as Basel Convention 2002. So in order to ensure effective implementation of EPR by producers and to increase their role, Ministry of Environment and Forest has notified some e-waste management rules. So e-waste handling and disposal rules 2005 came into force on 23rd December 2005. And these rules were amended in the following years. In 2008, and in 2010, it was written that these are draft e-waste management and handling rules. And in 2011, it is named as e-waste management and handling rules. And in 2005, draft e-waste management rules. So under the e-waste management rules 16, CPCB has been mandated to prepare the guidelines of extended producer responsibility. EPR, that environmentally sound dismantling, recycling, collection centers, storage, refurbishment, channelization, 
transportation and random sampling for testing. So e-waste management amending, amendment rules was notified in 2018, which fixes the reduction of toxic elements in its various components that is called as ROHS, restriction of hazardous substances. This rule has been recently notified and regularized from 1st April 23 and applied to every manufacturers, producers, refurbishers, dismantlers, and recyclers. So what are the key provisions of the rule? So you can see the increasing number of items to 106 and earlier it was called as 21 and it come under e-waste category. So here compulsory registration is needed and that is mainly focused on the extended producer responsibility framework and can be stored for a period not exceeding than 180 days. And they have to maintain a records of proper e-waste, what was stored there. Manufacturers make end product recyclable Products by different manufacturers need to be compatible with each other. So reduce the use of hazardous substances like lead, mercury, cadmium, among others in the manufacturing area. The environmental compensation is also notified here that is provided by the companies that don't meet their target. So Central Pollution Control Board shall monitor and verify the compliance of the reduction of hazardous substances, because this is the main agency of our country. So role of the state governments, they will earmark the industrial space for e-waste dismantling and recycling facilities, undertaking industrial skill development and establishing measures for protecting the health and safety of workers engaged in the dismantling and recycling facilities. And some targets were also fixed. Producers of electronic goods have to ensure at least 60% of the electronic waste is collected and recycled by 23, with targets to increase 70% by to 80% in 25 to 27. And finally, 29th, it has to be completed up to 80%. So our focus is on 2030. published report of PACE in 2020, that is platform for accelerating the circular economy. The circular economic model can be a huge benefit for this sector as it reduces the cost of consumers by 7% by 2030 and 14% by 2040. If developed in the right way, employing a circular economy for the electronics and EV sector could create millions of jobs worldwide. So think of that. Some may be low paid, but require no skill, but over time, they will be changed into a wide range of job opportunities emerging. Sustainable management of e-waste can combat poverty and generate green jobs through proper recycling of e-waste. And that would also safeguard the environment and human health from various hazards. Since this is a growing resource and one metric tons of e-waste yields about 200 kilograms of copper. Best available technology for, through best available technology for resource recovery, it will produce more profitable yields of costly metals and materials. So in future, this will give rise to the need of skilled persons, new designers, circular economists, and urban mine specialists, and us electronics as a service officers. So concept of equitium should be also promoted. And from take back policy that each and every electronics would be acknowledged and documented at each step. So these are the main opportunities. So now I'm focusing on our brass city and this is the hotspot of, of the all over India as I think what are happening here, this is the uh, of course, our administration is, um, uh, is doing better and proceeding uh, towards the circular economy 
and uh, meetings are being held time to time and uh, we can see that why it is why it is uh, happening here so till a few years back it was concentrated in a metro cities like delhi kolkata mumbai bangalore and chennai but with the generation in e waste and it has started spreading in neighboring small cities and towns like muradabad although the muradabad is this time big city so earlier muradabad was the biggest exporter of brass ware in the country and popularly known is brass city of india and still they are doing good in brass uh, exporters but at that time due to global recession and decreasing demands for brass products e waste has become one of the natural choices for people to earn their livelihood and because they were knowing the metal processing recovery and they have infrastructure also according to government report in 2011 50 to 80% of the printed circuit boards used in appliances in india ends up in muradabad and the printed circuit boards mainly brought from the japan because they have costly solders and golden solders the metal recovery process adopted by informal recyclers in muradabad is very crude the rudimentary and risky ways of e waste handling is being done in the household basement and near ramganga uh, although now e recyclers are established in the city and mainly this process is being done with the segregation open burning grinding and washing and acid bath so burning of dismantled parts or discarded electronics is being done that is near the ramganga river and these are uh, some uh, temporary settlements and these are being burnt on the roof in a very dense area so what is happening of that area you can think of here soldering is being done that uh, the parts which are larger that was uh, being broken by the torches and in 2017 when the air quality index reaches up to 446 and falls in the uh, maroon gen uh, maroon zone then uh, air france press team afp team came in muradabad to see the what is the conditions and that was published in gulf times you can see online these news so it was firstly published by down to earth and down to earth you know that is a fortnightly journal published by uh, dr sunita narayan she is an emittent uh, eminent um, environmentalist in the country and uh, she is padma shri awardi also and what is going on you can see here uh, in the ramganga river printed circuit boards are uh, being washed by a child and in whom you can see and that is dismantled here and the condition you can see and these are some news that is illegally waste recycling booms in muradabad that is the news of 2015 published by nazar abbas in times of india and again this is a news that this is a new e waste disposal hub because it is near the delhi so this was the reason so this is the pathetic condition of river ramganga uh, that is almost all the year and some ngos all are almost doing in that field that they are cleaning at every sunday that parivartan the change is going with their teams and they are cleaning and getting uh, some uh, means you can see the electronic waste there also along with uh, some waste these are the pictures you can see after lockdown in august 2020 and that is taken by a newspaper these are the uh, values of pm10 you can see the blue line that is the standard value of the uh, pm10 and how it is doubled at the site site 1 site 2 and site 3 these are site 1 is uh, rather uh, less polluted 
that is in a city area and these are in a congested area site 2 and site 3 so i uh, can't reveal all these slides because that is a long work so i have selected few slides only so this is the pm 2.5 value that you can see in january in winter season the highest value you can see and due to smoke condition due to inversion conditions all the pollutants are near the background they are unable to uh, spread in the environment and not easy to disperse in that climatic conditions and in the rainy season the uh, lowest values are recorded but you can see that is higher than the standard lines that is given by the national ambient air quality standard so these are uh, some pictures when we uh, did health service in pdc mm -hmm. a team uh, came from the uh, icmr and nivsd national institute of occupational health and that team surveyed all the area and we have collaborated our study uh, in a project that was uh, sponsored from cst and that project focuses on the uh, e-waste recycling activities and what are the impacts of these so these are the different areas mm -hmm. this is a temple and uh, uh, where the all the workers are here to give their uh, blood so blood samples and uh, urine samples and nail samples and hair samples were collected and air monitoring and soil and crop monitoring were done from our side so these are the different camps of 2018 you can see here Our students are engaged in this work and she is uh, dr ranjana who, who has uh, collaborated with our team and these are other pictures of the other areas people are suffering too much here and the paper was published in 2019 after this assessment that assessment of air pollution caused by illegal e waste burning to evaluate the human health risk and this was i think in my knowledge this is the first study on environment and health and for that we uh, we got an appreciation for that that this project was awarded the best in the environmental categories in whole up so we have to do a lot and uh, finally we can see that uh, people of all the of our country should see and should acknowledge our city and this is one program that was held in 2021 on 7 september uh, the day was uh, celebrated that was international day of clean air for blue skies thank you so much Now it is over. Thank you. Thank you, Arunika It was a very informative presentation. Just a moment. I will uh, close the. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, I think you can see me now. Yes. Okay. Uh, there are a few questions that we have received. Uh, one of them is uh, how effective have these policies been in reducing the amount of e-waste generated and uh, promoting responsible uh, disposable practices? Pardon, sir. Uh, the question was that how effective have these policies been in reducing the amount of e-waste that is being generated and as well as promoting the responsible uh, disposal practices? Yeah, actually, uh, we have to uh, promote and we have to look towards our current policies. And when the policies have any gaps or in any regulations, then we have to suffer these problems. So new rules, according to new rules, we can see that uh, this is the effective provision that we have 
imposed all these things on the extended producer responsibility means we, whoever is producing and that is responsible mainly they have to collect from their collection centers and they have to channelize towards the formal recycling unit and this is applicable to every manufacturers producers refurbishers dismantlers and recyclers and they are all required to register on portal developed by cpcb and no entity shall carry out any business without registration and it will be done through online portal so if we have followed the epr regime and if they are responsible and doing their, they are meeting their targets of e-waste recycling, then we can move forward and we are also a part and we have to take part in that process also. Okay. As you just mentioned about the gaps, the another question is actually on the similar line. So the, uh, the question has been asked about what are the policy gaps and challenges that we need to address in order to improve this e-waste management. Because uh, regardless of the policies, there is still a big gap between the production yeah, and yeah. actual uh, collection and yeah. disposal of it. So, Actually, uh, the policies and law are being formed, but no one is looking for proper implementation. This is the main thing. And emphasis is only given on registration of recyclers. But no one is noticed noticing that they are back-end working methods. And most of the recyclers are, uh, uh, we can see that they are millionaires. Now this shows that they are still into informal recycling. And inspections and audits should be frequent in that areas. And examples like CPCB new rules, that point number 10 says that labor involved in the e-waste recycling and recycling should be of skilled labors they are still simple workers. So this is just a new policy book. Half of the recyclers in India are not aware about these terms and conditions, and they even pay attention towards their labor, especially when, when it comes on their health and safety issues and their skill, skill development parts. So we don't have much time to think action and time. We have to think we or karega. So this is the policy gap and uh, why uh, we are uh, we are being reluctant. So this is the reason mainly. So people are coming forward, of course, and discharging their uh, work, but there is uh, long to do. There is uh, There are many issues in between that is uh, uh, maintaining our gaps. And challenges, if you are think, then what are the main challenges that like uh, our government agencies, they are ensuring that dismantling and recycling process should be done in the formal centers. And Department of Labor have also ensured that recognition and registration of workers should be done. And they should assist the formation of groups of such more workers. And they have to undertake the industrial skill development activities. And they should have annual monitoring and ensure safety for the health of workers as they are involved in the dismantling and recycling process. So all should be done, what, uh, what should be said and what is being done. This is the mainly gap. So uh, there is a certain communication gap as well between the policy makers and the waste management importance to the public. Actually, some international organizations have said that these are the policies and the take back policy is the main policy. So if it is uh, uh, means sold and if it is taken back, this will be the best issue and this is the best option. And what is the need of then making policy of evils? So first it was uh, included in hazardous waste. But in 2006, I would like to mention here one incident that in 2006, an incident happened and near the coast of Abidjan, when we talk about the international organizations and what are the suitable e-waste management practices that was being done very late. And in 2006, 
what happened near the coast of Abidjan that was located in the Africa, a cargo ship which was registered in Panama that dumped the e-waste e -waste and toxic waste uh, there about uh, 12 places. And according to UN and Cote de uh, Ivore, about 1 lakh lives were affected there. And out of his 30,000 were severely affected with skin and lungs problem. And this incident devastated the whole world to implement a policy, especially on e-waste. And this solely is management and the handling rules. So is being done by, in our country is being done by a true recycling Vans International Institute of E-Waste Management that is in Bangalore. So there are many institutes are doing, but more have to be done in this line. Yes, I think uh, we have addressed the questions that have been asked and I thank you again for this wonderful presentation. I think it was extremely informative because most of the uh, technicalities of this topic are missing from the general discourse. I think we can close the discussion now. Uh, if you have anything to add, ma'am, otherwise we can. Yes, actually, uh, FN, UN and their countries uh, forms a seven point agenda with 169 objectives. And these are mainly focuses to keep our planet sustainable. So when it meeting was held in September 15, then the goals were being achieved with some initiatives. And so now there is a need of working of people with C20, honestly, that is the civil 20. And I think mm -hmm. C20 should be made in every city, means a group of 20 people in each city, and they will make a group and finally a C20 in our country, at the country level. So this, uh, this will really uh, proceed with an honest way and with six objectives that is mainly is three, six, eight, 11, 12 and 14. And these are directly related with our health of people and environment. And that is the bigger issue. And one thing is also I'd like to mention that uh, Veena Sehswala, she is an Indian lady and she is doing very well in Australia and uh, she is known as a beast queen and the fellow of Australian Academy and she brought Pranti in recycling in Australia. So this is also, this can also be done in our country. She is known for the green steel, recycling and micro factories. Micro factories can also be established in the field of EVs. So she is a laureate professor and, and one uh, that uh, uh, Veena and uh, that in, uh, if we talk about the uh, whole world, the best is being done by Hugo. There are stricter laws. When a person is, um, is throwing his waste in a dustbin, then he first goes online that what is the new rule uh, in this month? Is there any update of that rule of e-waste or anything? Or is a, anything not updated? So with updated rules, they throw anything but we don't have any awareness. So awareness is the best issue and we have to address common people through schools, through citizens, through workshops and through uh, conventions that may be done. And that is the best option. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think the decentralized approach is uh, one that you are mentioning uh, in a way, if I'm correct. Yeah. Okay. So I think we would take those recommendations and we would be writing the final uh, by drafts for the C20 recommendation. And I think it was extremely important uh, that you mentioned it on the platform like this. Uh, I thank you again. And I think we close the discussion now. Again, thank you for joining us. And I will.